Good afternoon, good afternoon. The four o'clock, shadow angry. How are you? All right, all right. Haven't had much to say lately. There's not really much going on at work. We're a bit quiet. The, um, are you going to try and get across there? I don't mind if you try. We're so polite on this road. When we're going home, you'll see there's a lot of roads that turn out onto it. And uh, we know, you know, we almost do like alternate, let people out. One goes, one comes on. One goes, one comes on because uh, we're all in the same boat. We all have to sort of get on at some point. See, I've let him out. Now he's let someone else out. He's not looking at me. You want to go? Yeah, now he's looking at me. Good. There comes another one. It's all because of this stupid roundabout they've been building for the last 10 years. Anyway, what did I want to talk about to you today? All right, so now, with you, with you, not to you, with you. Of course, although you don't really say much, it is a two-way conversation. I hear your voice in my head. So, today I was thinking about VAT. Which I know, I know, I know. Not the most exciting subject in the world. But the Labour government gets in at the next election, which is in two days time, and as it appears that they will, their only firm manifesto promise is to put VAT on um, private school tuition. And so, <clears throat> normally, you know, old Angry's got an opinion on everything and it doesn't take too long really to say well yeah actually that's a good idea or a bad idea I don't take any notice of the prevailing Twitterati or Chatterati or uh, what uh, you know what people are saying on the news I tend to analyze every subject you know from first principles and I sort of try and work out whether it makes any sense so you know, my first thoughts on VAT or on schools are that I don't think that the schools should be exempt from VAT because I don't think any businesses should be exempt from VAT because the minute the government starts choosing which businesses are exempt from VAT then you get into a situation where the, where the government choosing winners and losers and that's very anti capitalist and anti-sensible. I'm going to turn right here and go the wiggly way back. So so that was my first thought but then then very quickly came along another thought which basically said oh don't run him over that was a thought uh, which said basically you know should the government tax for example I was thinking then immediately obviously I'm looking at it from the dental point of view, the dental perspective. So in the dental perspective is that, uh, let me just see if I can get the steering wheel out of the way here, that's a bit better. Um, that I'm obviously a private dentist and I'm thinking well if they start taxing private schools then they probably, uh, they could uh, put two and two together and start taxing private healthcare, private dentists. Now, the reason why I'm against uh, exempting things from VAT is because uh, people abuse it. Like, for example, where, where I work is a, uh, it's a business centre and it's owned by a third party and, um, and basically they set themselves up as a charity and their charity is looking after businesses, right? Being, being charitable to businesses. But they're not at all charitable to businesses. They don't charge less than the market rate for the rent. And then they don't, certainly during COVID, they didn't uh, ask for anything less than the full amount or give any consideration to, uh, you know, a rent, a rent freeze or rebate or anything. So I have no choice but to conclude that the only reason that they have charitable status is because uh, it suits them from a tax point of view because as far as I know they do damn all 
to fulfil the, the charter by which they're granted the charitable status. And I think that applies to a lot of uh, companies, especially as you get towards the medium and larger end. You know, we've got the, um, perhaps the, the rich patrons who are doing it on an international scale and they come along and say, yeah, I'll, I'll set this business centre up and this is how we'll structure it. You know, we'll get our guys in London to structure it as a charity and so we'll pay less in the way of taxes. And I really don't agree with that. I think that, uh, you know, if you're going to say you won't charge VAT on charity, charitable services, and let's face it, that's a very wide remit, isn't it? That's a very wide load of stuff. That you, if you say, well, you're going to exempt charities, think of the, the breadth of services and products that charities provide, and to charge no VAT on all those. Now, okay, you can say, well, that's a good thing, you know, really, why should you be charging? Why should the government be taxing stuff like charitable donations and, and things like that? But, and there's been a big argument about whether the government should charge VAT on sanitary towels and because they're necessary supplies, you know. Apparently for women, sanitary towels are necessary supply, whereas for men, razor blades aren't. So there's, there's VAT on razor blades, but there's no VAT on, on tampons. I mean, the whole thing is a, is a mess. It's a mishmash. So, where, what are we to make of this? How are we supposed to make some sense out of this? The other thing that I've sort of taken into consideration is the fact that uh, the government, that the public sector, I'm not talking about public schools, because if you're watching this from abroad, you have to understand that in in England in particular, the, the schools that you pay to go to are called public schools. They're not, whereas in America, the schools that you don't pay to go to are called public schools. Um, and so we have state schools and public schools, whereas in America you have public schools and private schools. Well, the maths of it is that uh, on average about seven thousand pounds is spent per pupil in a state school in the uk whereas the fees the average fees are typically for a private school what we call a public school are typically fifteen thousand pounds so let's just for the sake of argument say they're double just a bit more than double right so what you've got there is don't don't pretend either that state schools pay VAT because they don't, right? And, and I'll explain that. Even if they do, they pay it to the government. So the government pays it out with its left hand and takes it back with its right. So uh, with, with the, the public schools, the state schools in the UK, they're not they're not paying with their own money, and their money goes out of the one state account and, and gets taken up in the other state account. You know, there's no added value there really. So, but for private schools to pay VAT would be a big uh, imposition, especially with VAT being 20%, which, you know, I think, I think is really very high. I mean, VAT makes a big difference it's a very, very high purchase tax. For the government to take 20% slice of all the economic activity in the country, I think is outrageous. And the way you have to look at it is that, uh, you know, every time you buy something worth five pounds, the Chancellor is there with his hand out for another pound, making it six. Well, actually he's not. I mean, it's no, 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 no. That's not correct. Every time you spend four pounds, the government, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. It's 20%, so it's one fifth. So it is, five goes up to six. Although, uh, and it's the same with every time you spend a tenner, he wants another couple of pounds. So you have to think of the chancellor. I always think of the chancellor. Every time I buy something, like I've just bought a banner, an advertising banner 
and it's it's 45 pounds and I'm thinking that's not bad it's uh, 12 foot wide 4 foot high full colour printed and uh, okay so I paid 20 quid for the artwork on it so that's 65 but then by the time you add on postage which is 14 pound 50 and then 20 percent on everything including the postage uh, you're looking at 95 quid for a 45 pound poster a banner I mean it makes a big difference and it's not if we had a philosophy in this country of uh, raising raising income through expenditure taxes you know by by saying to people you can keep your money keep your earnings but if you spend it then that's when we're going to get you for tax then that's one thing or another the other way around is saying well we'll take all your money at source when you earn it but then we'll keep the um, the consumption taxes low but in this country <laughs> we'll get it in the neck both ways they, they tax us a lot when we earn and then they tax us a lot when we spend so so are we making any progress on the VAT issue so let's throw something else in the pot about uh, I don't know, 20 years ago now, I suppose, there was a scheme called the Toothbrush Scheme. And what some bright spark worked out was that the government was so keen to get everybody registered for VAT, if, even if they had quite a small amount of sales turnover, that it was possible to sell toothbrushes in your practice, and which technically would be Vatable, but what you could do is if you registered for VAT voluntarily, you could claim the VAT back on all the toothbrushes. Now, that involved two things. One was that you, you had to register for VAT voluntarily, even though you're under the threshold, and you could do that if you said that it was likely that you would be over the threshold in a year or two and you had to get a computer because believe me that is not the sort of thing you want to work out with a piece of chalk on a board and secondly uh, you had to do all the VAT calculations so anyway the, the, the revenue soon knocked this on the head uh, because they like to have money coming in they don't like to see a dentist who's volunteered to register for VAT on the basis that he's going to get back more than he's paying in because you would, you would pay next to nothing in and yet you would claim VAT back on everything on all your materials and and uh, everything you bought you could get your VAT back and then and you probably only charge a couple of quid on VAT on your toothbrushes so they soon knocked that on the head and said it was, it was not allowable so it, Way all backed up. So since then, dentistry has been non vatable Now, what are the effects of VAT on dentistry? Well, apart from the fact that, as I say, it's a right royal pain in the butt, and another thing, another deadline that you've got to pay quarterly, it's Where am I going with this? It, yeah, it brings in, it brings in other, it distorts the market in other ways. Uh, okay, so here we are. Here's a good example. I don't know if you've ever had a patient say, can I get the VAT back on this? For the most part with personal expenditure, people don't uh, expect to get the VAT back. And it's only business people who are VAT registered who are always asking if they can get the VAT back. Now, the only way that they could buy dentistry on the business would be as if they were like a TV personality or something and they needed, you know, a nice set of teeth. It's part of their brand, part of their image. 
you know, someone like uh, someone like that, you know, Russell Brand or uh, that guy from Love Island, Ryland Clark. He's he would be he's claiming his teeth as a as a tax expense, right? In the same way as ballet dancers can insure their feet, and painters can insure their hands, and singers can insure their voices, and uh, you know claim back um, claim back the cost of sheet music. Whereas if I and you and I went into somewhere and bought some sheet music, we we couldn't claim the value back. So it's not like you get a rush of people. Um, saying that they want I mean and it will be up to them to obviously reclaim the VAT anyway but then you would have to give them a VAT refund uh, you'd, you'd have to give them a VAT invoice and they would then use your VAT number and that VAT invoice to reclaim the, the VAT and so it's going to um, it's going to mean that well for a start if they, they imposed VAT on dentistry, then it's just going to put the price of dentistry up 20%, isn't it? And this is what the private um, schools are worried about. It's just a flat rate 20% surcharge on, on their services. Now, I have a lot of sympathy for the private school sector because You've got there a bunch of people who are providing a service, education, for approximately twice what gets invested in the children in, in the state sector. They're, they're, they're investing, they're charging £15,000, right? Just think about this, for a service that can be obtained, as whereas you can get a service let's say that provides £7,000 worth of value free of charge. So that's quite a big decision, isn't it? Do you get a service that is worth £7,000 free or do you opt to forego the £7,000 that you would be due and go for a... Uh, and pay for a service that's cost £15,000 because you perceive it to be value for money not necessarily a better service it's always going to be a better service the question is at fifteen thousand pounds is it still value for money well uh, a lot of people who go to private schools think it is and i think that there's not a little jealousy in this because anyone who goes to a private school is freeing up resources that can be used by other pupils in state schools and this applies to dentistry as well of course anyone who goes to have their teeth fixed privately is freeing up resources not not much in in fact f all really but is freeing up resources that they would need if they were to be engaged in and treated in the private sector so it's all very well saying we're going to put VAT on private schools <clears throat> because there are two types of parents those who uh, you know go to Eaton and Harrow and uh, you know or they're in this country because they're the ambassador to Chile or something and, and the government of Chile is paying to put the ambassador's children through private school and then there's the other uh, lot, you know, the the parents who just understand the value added by the private school sector and do scrimp and save and take two or three jobs and don't go on holidays and stuff like that to put together the 15,000 quid to put their kids through schools. Now, I'm not saying all of them will uh, have to go back into the into the public sector I mean that's a large number of them will I'm sure because you know you just do the maths right it's ten thousand pounds a year plus that adds another two thousand on 
If it's 15,000, it adds another 3,000. So your fees are going to go up from 15 to 18, aren't they? And it's, you know, you, and you can't say, oh, well, the schools will absorb that. Because you can't absorb, you can't get an 18,000 pound bill back down to 15,000 pounds without, without affecting something. This is Roger Gale's house here. But Roger Gale, what an idiot. Should have given up years ago. He's about 102. Anyway. He's about to become my MP, so he's a fine, outstanding bloke, because they reorganise the constituencies. What they've done is, instead of splitting East Kent into two constituencies, both of whom are t have a Tory majority, they split it into two different constituencies, one of which has an inbuilt Labour majority, and one of which has a, an inbuilt Tory majority. And Gail is the he's inherited the the still Tory one, and Craig uh, what's his face, but something or other, he's inherited the the one that's basically all the uh, Margate, Thanet, and uh, Ramsgate, which will be Labour, and uh, he's the guy who lost his arms and his legs from sepsis. Craig will look on the top now, I think. So, so, you know, this is misguided. It's a misguided idea. And in the only other place where it was tried, which I think was Greece, it was reversed. Because it's a stupid idea. It doesn't, you know, the, the Labour Party are selling us that if we could just, all this fat, all this fat we're going to get, Hello. He's gathering his breakfast or dinner. All this, we could get all this fat. We'll put it all towards the state schools, and all of a sudden, the state schools are going to be brilliant. You know, one billion pounds. Well, they won't get their money because either, you know, private schools are smart cookies, and they'll think of another way of getting round it. They'll set themselves up as trusts or something. Uh, and then secondly, they won't get as much as they think because they're assuming that nobody is going to go into the state sector. So they'll get less than they think and they'll end up having to spend more than they think. So, so the whole thing is complete stupidity. But as I say, I think there's a certain amount of, um, you know, jealousy because the people who don't go to uh, state schools, they're like, well, you know, good that's going to put their nose out of joint. Let them, you know, if they want to go private, then let them find the vat. Let them, and, but, but for the people who go to Eaton, as I say, it won't be anything more than a minor annoyance. Whereas, um, uh, whereas what it's going to do is it's going to severely handicap a sector that's established itself as a, as a center of excellence as a provider of excellence in the private sector and uh, a bit like private dentists have in the, in the dental sector. So, you know, by all means, and the church as well, for example, I mean, the exemptions that the church gets doesn't pay rates. Why doesn't the church pay rates? You know, they, they, there are all these exemptions that are going on and quite honestly, and most of them could be knocked on the head. But I don't think it's fair to ask, uh, I don't think it's fair to ask private sector providers to pay VAT in competition with the public sector providers who don't, you know, who might pay the VAT and then and then the government gets that money back. So they're saying, well, don't worry, you know, you can pay the VAT, but we'll give you more to pay for it. And then it's going to go straight back to the treasury because we're going to get it straight back anyway. That's just not, that's not how you compete. I had, I'll tell you one more thing quickly. Actually, I'll tell you. I'll tell you that tomorrow. All right. Okay. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.